Sunday afternoon, March 1st. I'm your host, Nadia Sahari. Wasn't that a beautiful melody? It's called The Light of Hope. And that's my message today. We all have a light of hope. I wanted to share something with you that I heard this morning. I thought it was wonderful, and I think we should all hear it. I wake up so early nowadays, I mean, like in the middle of the night, like 4 o'clock in the morning, and I can't sleep because my brain is overworking. And God is telling me things, talking to me, and telling me about new things and what I should do. So this morning, I got up, which is unusual, like around 430 And I made myself a cup of coffee and everything and just relaxed a little bit, watched uh, Joyce Myers and read the Bible. And then Charles Stanley came on and he talked about that we matter to God. Do you ever feel like you don't matter to anyone? Do you ever feel like nobody cares, nobody loves you? I have felt that way. I have felt like that a lot of times in my life. And that came from the abuses that I've been through in my life. I have forgiven those that did abuse me. And I've been abused for years and years. But I've learned from that abuse. I've also fallen back into the rut of allowing people to abuse me because I wanted to please them, because I wanted to show them that I loved them and that I was willing to do whatever I needed to do to be the person that they could love and can love. So what happens when you do that, when you allow someone to abuse you or control you, and you wake up one day and you say, Wow, this has got to stop. I can't allow this person to control me. I'm a human being. Just because I'm successful and I have things I worked hard for in my life and that I am the person that I am, that I'm a strong woman, that I should let or allow a man to control me and to make me feel less than nothing, No way. I stopped it. I will not allow that. I've been through too much in my life. There is no reason. Nobody should be controlled by anyone. So I fought back. And boy, that created a bigger mess. But you know, God takes care of everything. You just handle it. Let God handle it. And let God fix it. God can fix everything. And we look back and we see the mistakes. And we see what we've done. What we said. And we learn from it. And we change it. And we work with it. And we do things better. And we know why we did it. And why we said it. And then we change our ways. And we work on ourselves. And let God work through us and change us. Because he's the only one. Because human beings cannot change another human being. So the battle begins when you stand up for yourself. And you have someone who wants to control you. It never works. It gets worse. But then you pray And you have faith and you see the light of hope. And you know that things are going to be better. And they will get better. Without any doubt. Because God is in control, not us. I am a child of God. You are a child of God. We have value and credibility in God's eyes. We have God in our heart. We matter. He loves us. He cares about how we feel. Human beings will disappoint us always. They will do things to us and say things to us. But God is always with us. 
He will protect us. We women, especially, we have to think of ourselves as being queens. We are of value. We are worthy. We are worthy to be loved. I am worthy. I am valued by God. I am a queen. I deserve the best a man can give me. You deserve the best a man can give you or a woman can give you. We all deserve the best that God can give us and he will give us his best if we ask. The most important thing is to forgive those that hurt you and that did things to you. We always want to be loved. That's what we all want. But the mistake that we make is that we don't sit down like two people who care, two people who love each other and want to be better and do things differently and do things the right way and be obedient to our Lord. We cannot live in sin. That is why the blessings get blocked. Because we live in sin. God won't bless those who are living in sin. You want blessings? Then do what God wants you to do. Forgive. Let go. Come back to God. Come back and be the person and the man or the woman that you should be. Change your behavior. Take the responsibility. Ask God to change you. Because nobody can change you but God. And I love what Charles Stanley says. That when people treat us like they don't care, we feel unloved. But God can change all that. God does care. And he knows our sin. He knows our weaknesses. He knows what we say, what we do. He knows our hearts. He knows what we're going to do before we do it. He knows we're in pain. Believe me, I have had a broken heart for a long time. I've had trust issues for a long time. But you don't see that when you're in it because of the anger and the quarreling, and just a madhouse. You don't see it. You're in the jungle. But when you're away from it, you see it, and you go, oh, my Lord, how in the world did I do that? Why did I do that? How can I fix it? And it is fixable. Everything on this earth is fixable if we go to God and we ask for repentance, and we ask for forgiveness, and we ask for guidance. Things cannot remain the same as they used to be. If you're truly a child of God, truly saved, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. For those who believe in him shall never perish, but have everlasting life. Read the book of John. It's beautiful. Read the whole Bible. God speaks to you and he tells you how to live. He tells you why you do the things you do or say what you do. If your behavior hasn't changed, if your way of doing things hasn't changed, if you continue with the same behavior as your past and you run away as you always have, then You must question your heart condition because if you're truly saved, you would be convicted. The Holy Spirit indwells in you, in your heart. And the Holy Spirit shows up and lets you know what you are doing is wrong. Let's you confess to your sin. Let you take responsibility. And... While doing that, he brings us back to Jesus. He gives us the heart 
for Jesus and to live a godly life. If you are a true child of God, you are sensitive to all the things you are doing and saying, how you are living. You're sensitive to your relationship to God, the relationship to his word in the Bible, to being obedient to God, doing what he wants you to do instead of what you want to do in the flesh. Because you're still sinning. We matter to God. Maybe we don't matter to our partners, our husbands, our wives, our children, but we do matter to God. I love the sermon that Charles Stanley gave this morning, and this is all paraphrasing. I made a few notes, but I'm kind of doing this off the cuff, but I am getting the point across, and that's what I want to do. I was saved by Jesus because he loved me when no one else did. Today, he still loves me. I've been through the fire. I've been through heartbreak for the last 10 years. I've been through heartbreak most of my life. I've had success. I've done well in my life. I've done more than most in my life and for myself with the blessings from God. God has blessed me throughout my life. And every man that has been in my life, whether a husband or a partner, I helped to become successful. I helped them to be better than what they were when they first came into my life. I gave them knowledge. I gave them street smarts. I gave them intelligence and smartness and godliness. And I gave them my love. I gave them my heart. I gave them my everything to let them know that I love them. And I did love them, each one. I did my best because God used me for every single one to rescue them, to help them to be what they wanted to be, that they couldn't do on their own, that they didn't know how to do. But I had the head smarts. I had the heart that God gave me. I had the experience that God blessed me with to do it. I was there for them, every single one of them. Only two of them couldn't handle it. One was very famous, a musician. He had a problem because I made more money than he did. And another one couldn't handle it either, couldn't handle my strength, could not handle what I had done in my life because I had worked hard for my money. I worked hard for what I own. But everything that I had, I shared. I shared everything I had. It was for them too. They enjoyed having it. They enjoyed using it. But they didn't like the fact that it was something I worked for, that I obtained from my brightness, from my experience, from my ethics. They could not accept that. Why? Because too weak and had a poor self-image. Especially the one. He really had big problems and tried to control me. I didn't do that to him. He did it to himself. I did what God wanted me to do. I gave him the strength. I gave him the knowledge I gave him, I gave him my heart, I gave him my love, I tried to pull him up. He wasn't comfortable on top. He wanted to be where he was secure. So he tried to pull me down off the ladder. He fell off and tried to pull me down, but I would not let him. I fought it and that made it worse. And that created more anger in him. And he lost control. And I feel so bad that that happened. But should I be punished because I'm successful? Should I be punished because God blessed me? No. God blessed me for a lot of reasons. And I'm glad and I'm happy. And I'm grateful for what God has given me. 
And I did a lot for every single man that's been in my life. I gave them my heart. I did a lot for each one. I made each one feel so great about themselves. I gave them opportunity. Were they grateful for God's blessing in their lives? No. But God used me. I didn't do it. God used me. God gave me the strength. God gave me the talent. God gave me the knowledge. God gave me the love. God gave me the heart. He did it all because he knew I could do it. Because he blessed me and he still does. How blessed am I? How blessed can I be that God trusted me to do this for men who could not do it for themselves? I brought them back to Jesus through Jesus, using me. Jesus put me in their lives, and I'm so grateful. I have no regrets. I am grateful that God trusted me and used me to do that for him. I will never let a man pull me down. I've worked too hard and too long and been through too much, and I've been blessed by God. And I'm not going to let those gifts go away because some man is too weak to accept me and love me for who I am. And one reason I know for sure that I'm blessed is because at the age of 14, when I was going through hell with abuse, I still honored my mother and my father. And God says in the Bible, honor thy mother and thy father, for thy days will be long and blessed. And it's true. He has blessed me because I honored them. No matter what happened, no matter what they did, no matter what they said. And I still, I'm still like that today. I get hurt by individuals. I get hurt by people. I get hurt by partners. I get hurt by many but I still love them, and I forgive them, and I stay strong because it's in me. I've had this strength since childbirth. I have had this strong will, and I can't tell you how many men have tried to break me, even today, even my father, my own father. We all, all these men, every man that I've had in my life tried to break my strong will, but I won't let them. I will never let them because God gave me that. That is something I was born with, and I will not let anyone take me down. No one, and you shouldn't either. And you should get your strength from God because he'll give it to you. Just ask him for it. Wow, I'm on a roll. <laughs> it's all coming from my heart. Every single word I'm saying is from my heart because I mean it, because I'm living it, because I love everybody. And when I do love people, I love everyone. I have a deep love. I'm not a shallow person. I'm not a shallow lover. I love deeply. I love my friends. I love everyone. My exes, my everything. I love. I forgive. I just want peace and happiness. I want God to keep blessing me. I want God to give me the strength and the faith that I need. And I'm asking him every day. I have desires. I have things that I want in my life. I'm asking him for it right now. I'm asking him to bring to me the desires of my heart and the love that I have in my heart and the person that I love in my heart. I love my children, my grandchildren. I love my family. I love my friends. I love all of you. And now I'm going to get off the roll. And um, I'm just, I just have to, I believe that I had to say what I said because I know a lot of you out there have gone through the same thing and you need encouragement and you need strength and you know that God is the only one that can give it to you.
Another thing Charles Stanley said, as women that we feel this way many times, he's heard women complaining all the time. The man in their life isn't loving them the way he used to love them. He isn't providing the way he used to. He's not bringing beautiful things to them. He doesn't do all the things he used to do. And they don't feel that love anymore. We need that love. We need that forgiveness. This is the worst feeling that a woman can feel, that the man in her life does not care about her, does not love her. It's horrible. If she loves her man, she will feel that she is no longer loved. But she does matter to God. Same thing with our children. They should not feel like we don't care about them and that they don't matter. That is why the world is a mess. Children killing children. Fathers killing children. Women killing women. Men killing men. Women, men killing families. Oh, it goes on and on. And why? Because they don't know who God is. There is so much confusion in this world today. So much confusion and so much frustration and anger and hatred because nobody is thinking about God. Nobody is going to God. Everybody is living in the flesh and sinning and not giving any regard to God. That's where we need to change things. We need to change all of that and bring God back into people's lives. God is the only one who died on the cross, resurrected to save us from sin and hell. He forgives us for everything that we do on this earth. Once we are saved, we are always saved. When we are convicted of our sins and we truly are children of God, he forgives us when we ask. Always. You are loved no matter what. As long as you ask for forgiveness. On our own, we will fail. We cannot get blessings or the gifts that God has for us while we are sinning. And that is a true story. If you are living in sin, you will not be blessed. And I can tell you that from personal experience. Once I got convicted, I had to change things. I was not being blessed. Neither was my partner. And we were a mess. But we can change that. We changed it. We can do better. We are better. And we can ask God to help us. And he will. Everything can be renewed through him, through Jesus Christ. If we ask, we can live a beautiful life. Definitely we'll have new problems, but for the most part, it will be better. Every day is better. I'm better than I was yesterday. Today, I'm better than I was yesterday. Tomorrow, I'll be better than today. One step at a time. It didn't happen overnight for me to be argumentative or whatever I am. It didn't happen overnight. It happened through the years. But I'm working on me. I'm asking God to show me, to change me, and to work with me and on me. And he is. Oh, he is. We are called the children of God. When someone matters to you, it will affect you in every way. It will affect your relationship to them, the way you speak to them, what you do for them, how you relate to them. When you are really involved in that person's life, how you're involved in that person's life. That is what matters. 
to you and to God. That's what Charles Stanley said, and it was so beautiful. And you'll treat them in a certain way because we are all God's children. We belong to him because we asked him into our lives, because we are truly saved. Ask yourself the next time you have anger or you feel nobody cares or, no, or that you don't matter. Ask, how did it happen? How did it get this way? How much time have I spent reading the Bible? How much time have I spent talking to God? Talk to him. Read the Bible. Let him help you. He will answer it. How about spending as much time with God as you do on your iPhone or texting? Many, many people have a texting addiction. And they'll text all day long or all night long, or periodically during the day, and it's just an addiction. And it's horrible. It's no different than a drug addiction. So instead of texting, if you spent that time that you waste texting with God, can you imagine the miracles that can happen in your life? Yes, your prayers can get answered. Yes, you can hear what he's saying to you. Yes. You will be able to hear his word and feel him and know him and love him as he loves you. Social network, get off of the social media. That is hurting us. We don't need social media for credibility. That's not where your value should be. Your value is in God. Your value is within yourself. You are valuable. You are credible. You don't need the comments. Those people don't know you. Yes, you know a few in person. I'm fortunate that I know hundreds of people personally. But even so, I have my assistant handle all my promotions, photos, whatever. She can do whatever she wants to promote the show. I have no interest otherwise. And I love the people that I know. I love everybody, actually, but I don't know everybody, but I love you, but I love God, and I want to spend more time with him. So do you have an addiction to texting? Do you have an addiction to social media? Do you have an addiction to selfies? Be careful because you'll fall off the cliff and you'll die. I do not like selfies. Do you want a Bible reading addiction? That would be good, wouldn't it? Let's do that. Let's be addicted to the Bible. Let's be addicted to God's word. Let's be addicted to how he wants us to live. Look at our society. We are miserable, frustrated, hate. Everything is horrible. The world is a mess. Diseases and famines and fires. Everything that the Bible says. Read Revelations. Oh my. God cares. God wants the best for us. Follow him, trust him, seek him, and you shall find him. Trust him. Ask him into your heart. How much time do you spend talking to God about your needs, about your love? We've lost our direction because the world has led us astray. The world has taken us into the world of hate. Turn off the media, the TV. Turn off the negativity. Listen to the positivity. Listen, read the Bible. God loves us. Pray, talk to him. God will provide for us now and forever because he loves us and because we do matter. Obey him and let the Holy Spirit into your heart. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Ask Jesus to save you today. What would Jesus do? What does Jesus want you to do? Ask him into your heart. Ask him to forgive you. Make things right. Do things right. Not as you did in the past. Do it as a new person in Christ. God bless you all. I love you. Thank you. 
I love you so much, every one of you. And I wish and hope and pray that you all ask Jesus into your lives. Amen. God bless America. God bless our president. God bless everyone in the White House. Bye for now. Thank you.